Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue on in our discussion. Staphylococcus saprophyticus, this is a gram-positive, catalase-positive, coagulase negative and urease positive cocci that forms in clusters. So if you compare this to the previous picture of Staph epidermidis, it's going to look fairly similar because they're all clustering up just like that previous one. But our big main difference here is going to be that this is actually novobiosin resistant. So if we test this against novobiosin, Staph epidermidis is sensitive to it where Staph saprophyticus is resistant. This, once again, similar to Epidermidis, is, a no is normally found on the human body, in particular in the female genital tract in the perineum. So this can uh, be found on swabs in the genital tract area, and it doesn't typically cause any problems unless it is able to seat inside of some sort of a lesion that allows it into the body or into the skin. This is the second most common cause of uncomplicated UTIs in young women, first being E. coli. Let's continue on and talk about Streptococcus pyogenes. We also know this as group A strep. This is a gram-positive cocci that are in chains. So previously we've discussed some gram-positive uh, cocci that are in clusters. These are in chains, so they're actually attached end-to-end -end and form a line or a rope type structure. What do strep pyogenes do? Well, it's pyogenic, meaning that it can cause pharyngitis, cellulitis, impetigo, and erysipelas. Uh, in its toxigenic state, it can cause scarlet fever, toxic shock-like syndrome, and necrotizing fasciitis. And in its immunologic type state, it can cause rheumatic fever and glomerulonephritis. Strep pyogenes is sensitive to bacitracin. It is a beta-hemolytic bacteria. And we can also check it as it is arylamidase positive. Typically, the pyrolidinol arylamidase, also known as PYR, typically that's used to distinguish between our enterococcus and our group D strep. But our group A strep does also show these characteristics. So the big key, if you see something that is PYR positive, is to check for its beta hemolysis. So if it is beta hemolytic, it has to be strep pyogenes or group A strep. Something that makes this particular microorganism more virulent is its ability to inhibit phagocytosis. How does it do that? Well it has a hyaluronic capsule and an M protein that are on the surface of the cell that help inhibit phagocytosis. Our body can actually produce some uh, antibodies against that M protein which is what's inhibiting phagocytosis. It can, it can produce antibodies against that M protein, but those antibodies actually give us the possibility of rheumatic fever developing. If you're wondering if you've had a recent infection with Staph pyogenes, we can do an ASO titer or an anti-DNA B antibody that will tell us if we have had that recent infection. And a way you can remember some of the clinical symptoms and signs associated with pyogenes is using the phrase, pyogenes pharyngitis can result in rheumatic fever and glomerular nephritis. So the keys here are using the pH for pharyngitis, fever, nephritis, and that will help you remember that it's phyogenes or pyogenes. If we do have strains that can cause impetigo, and if you remember, impetigo is what gives us those honey-crusted lesions. Well, impetigo strains can induce glomerulonephritis. That's something to remember there. Now, we also have the potential for scarlet fever. What is scarlet fever seen as? Well, scarlet fever is blanching, sandpaper-like body rashes, and specifically this strawberry tongue. You can see a picture of that here. It actually looks like the tongue uh, around the taste bud areas is kind of patchy like the seeds of a strawberry. So that is what strawberry tongue is. Uh, really what it does is it initially will have a white coating on it, which you can kind of see back in the back here. And then the papillae, uh, which are those dots, those become swollen and reddened, 
And so we've got that them protruding up through the white coat that gives us that strawberry type appearance. Let's discuss Strep agalactae or Streptococcus agalactae group B strep. Group B strep is a gram positive cocci. It is resistant to bacitracin. It is beta hemolytic. We've already talked about that a little bit. If you need some refresher on what beta hemolytic means, go back and find that video. And this does colonize the vagina quite often. What are some things that Streptococcus agalactae can cause? Well, it can cause pneumonia, it can cause meningitis, and it can cause sepsis. Specifically, what's happening here, this virulence factor with Streptococcus agalactae is due to the CAMP factor. Now, don't confuse this with cyclic AMP with the small c. Cyclic AMP and CAMP are two different things. CAMP here is actually referring to the author who created the test. It has nothing to do with cyclic AMP, so don't confuse those two. So, Streptococcus agalactae produces CAMP factor. What does that do? Well, it's going to enlarge the area of hemolysis that's formed by Staph aureus. You can test this by using the hippurate test, and it's actually going to be positive on the hippurate test. And, as we've discussed previously when we talked about Strep pyogenes, that Strep pyogenes is PYR positive. This group B Strep is PYR negative. We always check pregnant ladies around their 35th to 37th week of gestation so that we can see if they do have a streptococcus or a group B strep infection uh, using rectal and vaginal swabs. If they do have that, then what we're going to do is give them some intrapartum penicillin and ampicillin as a prophylaxis so that they don't pass that infection on to their child as it passes through the birth canal. So remember the big thing here, group B strep is for babies. So we always want to check the mother before she gives birth for a potential group B infection. If she has group B, then we will give intrapartin ampicillin, penicillin as a prophylaxis to help reduce the risk of the child contracting an infection as it passes through the birth canal. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.